2020 was an interesting year for video games. Not only were most people hunkered down due to the COVID-19 pandemic, but it was a year in which Final Fantasy VII Remake came out. We got the PlayStation 5 and Series X, Doom Eternal, Animal Crossing New Horizons, which everyone and their mother probably played, Hades, and so many more epic titles. In fact, when compiling data from Metacritic from 1996 to 2023, 2020 stands as the number four overall year for most games that scored an 80 or above. So needless to say, it was an excellent year. Now, I've played most of the games I mentioned, except Animal Crossing, it's just not a game for me. But the one I missed out on, Sucker Punch's Ghost of Tsushima, may indeed be the best of them all. And I thought, with the PC port coming out soon, now is the perfect time to dive in for a retrospective review. Ghost of Tsushima began development in 2014, shortly after infamous Second Son and its expansion, First Light. Sucker Punch had spent almost nine years on the infamous series, and many on the 160 man team at the time wanted to do something different, something new. During the prototyping and conceptualizing phase, the team focused on creating an open world game with a unique emphasis on heavy, intentional melee combat. This wasn't just going to be your typical hash and slash experience. Now, they knew they wanted to do a historical piece, but they simply weren't sure when and where it would take place. In fact, before nailing down the setting, Sucker Punch experimented with various themes, from pirates to Scottish outlaws, even the Three Musketeers. However, many on the team had a passion for covering feudal Japan and the samurai, but they just weren't sure how to tackle and portray that experience. That all changed, however, whenever they found a historical account of the Mongol invasion of Tsushima in 1274. Sucker Punch co-founder Brian Fleming said, after discovering that account, quote, the entire vision clicked into place. To them, the Mongol invasion was an easy setting to portray, given the supremacy and well-known supremacy of that of the Mongol army. They felt it would be easy to create a story with high stakes and clear conflict. Now, for some historical context, the first invasion of 1274 takes place during the early days of what we call feudal Japan and the Shogunate, a period of military rule of government via samurai. Roughly 100 years before, the Shogunate emerged due to a civil war conflict, the Genpei War, which saw an end to the aristocratic-based imperial system in rule in Kyoto and turned samurai, former military soldiers dedicated to aristocratic lords serving the emperor, into soldiers dedicated to the supreme shogun. So roughly 100 years after the establishment of the shogunate, the Mongols came knocking on the door and wow, have they been busy. Before hitting Japan, the Mongol empire had already dominated most of Asia, Eurasia, Eastern Europe, and even Korea. In terms of how the game depicts this period, it does a phenomenal job. And man, is this setting beautiful. From the gorgeous rolling hills and cherry blossom fields to the red autumn leaves, high end period architecture, temples, shrines, and so much more, my time spent in Tsushima was constantly filled with awe dropping moments. Moreover, the way the game portrays the culture, the fusion of Shinto, Confucius, and various sects of Buddhism is phenomenal. But all of this serves as the absolutely perfect backdrop to what I can only describe as one of the best stories ever portrayed in video games. So what is the story about? Ghost focuses on the journey of Lord Jin Sakai, a fictional samurai who lost his father at an early age and was raised by his beloved uncle, Lord Shimura. The game wastes no time diving into the action, as it kicks you off raiding a beach full of Mongol invaders and just keeps going from there. Sucker Punch did consider adding real historical figures into the game as well, but out of respect, they chose not to. Instead, keeping the setting accurate, but bringing all these new and unique characters into their world. Throughout the story, Jin struggles with deep universal human concepts such as vengeance, justice, just warfare, family, honor, and loyalty. And what amazes me is that every single main story quest, along with every side quest or tale as they're called in the game, doesn't waste an ounce of exposition. It all perfectly adds to the setting, stakes, and challenges to what Jin is going through. 
From the devastating impact of the invasion on farmers, to the tyrannical and cunning role of the Mongols' ability to turn Japanese against each other, I found myself wanting to experience each little note of story in the game, which is in large part why I ended up platinuming it. I've only done that maybe three times before, and the fact that this game got me to do it says quite a lot. Now while the story might be perfect, you might be asking, Mark, what about the gameplay? Pure Nirvana. From traversing the open world, to tackling side activities like fox dens, shinto shrines, bamboo strikes, or simply liberating mongol territories, Ghost offers a perfect harmony of activities within a near flawless open world experience. It manages to strike a perfect balance between the natural exploration that, say, a Breath of the Wild deploys against the overindulgent, icon-ridden strategy of the all-too-well-known Ubisoft experience. Through environmental cues like birds or foxes or random conversations with villagers throughout the island, new tales or side quests would populate on the map. But at no point did it make the free-roaming exploration aspect feel pointless. Rather, it kept me motivated to explore new areas naturally, discover new shrines or mysterious events, all while appreciating the structure of the map and mission plotting system. In terms of combat, I was so impressed with how much depth existed within the system. Whether I wanted to play more out in the open, leveraging my samurai abilities, or if I wanted to use my stealth combat more, it had a ton to offer. And what's most impressive is how fluid the game enables you to combine these approaches. After about five hours in, this hit me hard during a specific side mission where I had to destroy a Mongol shipping yard. I dived and ducked my way into the camp, assassinated a few people, got myself into a few large open skirmishes, and quickly moved back into the shadows to continue my mission. And at no point did the game feel stuck or did I feel handcuffed in any way, based on how I wanted to behave during each and every moment. Dare I say it, it did Assassin's Creed better than Assassin's Creed. Now in terms of criticisms, the only ones I think you could point out are aspects that any and all open world games have the potential to succumb to, an almost drowning in activities and time requirement that could lead one to lose focus on the overall end goal of the game. While some players appreciate this, others have a tendency to burn out quicker. Ghost Again offers that perfect balance. At no point did I feel like it overstayed its welcome, and while it offered a grandiose, beautiful world to explore and engage with, it all felt coherent within the setting of the story, along with Jin's overall mission. It's a big game, taking me at least 40 plus hours to fully complete, but it manages to keep the player engaged throughout it all. Which is perfect, because in terms of game finales, Ghost, through all of its beautiful character development and world building, has one of the best endings in games I've ever played, period. Now, I don't want to spoil it, because many who are watching may be waiting to play it on the PC, but I kid you not, as the credits rolled, I was left hand to mouth in absolute awe, truly blown away by the masterpiece Sucker Punch managed to create. And I'm not the only one who must have felt this way, because the game directors Nate Fox and Jason Connell were selected by the island of Tsushima to become permanent tourism ambassadors. Now, whenever a country says to two foreigners, hey, you did such an amazing job at telling a story locale to our culture and world, you can come here and tell people about it anytime, you know they knocked it out of the park. But not only did Sucker Punch give gamers an amazing single player experience, especially with the robust additional DLC that launched soon after the game, Icky Island, they also completely blew fans away with an absolutely free multiplayer expansion, Legends, which is still thriving to this day as it was supported with a ton of updates all the way into 2022. I did spend a good bit of time playing this mode and it's a great way to enjoy the ghost gameplay alongside friends in a somewhat loot and class driven approach to multiple modes. There's the four player max survival mode in which players protect locations against multiple hordes of Mongols, a four player max rivals mode in which two teams of two compete against each other in the above mentioned survival mode, and there's a two-player max story mode with unique quests. Now, all of these modes also bring in a more of a mythological aspect to the culture at the time. Now, I experienced all of this on the PlayStation 5 Director's Cut, which offered enhanced DualSense features, including the DLC, and many other improvements to the game for the PS5. I also experienced it on a gorgeous OLED TV with Dolby Atmos sound, and my, was it well worth it. Now, I'm not trying to tell you all to go out there and buy an OLED TV, but it was beautiful. Family over at the time, catching some gameplay, were asking me, what movie you're watching? Another commented on the beauty of the sound and environment, which, needless to say, along with the story and gameplay, the artistic and sound design of this game were magnificent. 
Four years into the current gen of systems, Ghost of Tsushima is one of the best looking and sounding games I have ever played. In conclusion, Ghost of Tsushima is one of those games that you want every gamer to experience and makes you wish people who didn't game could experience it too. It stands as a paramount example of what makes video games truly great and why they are more than activities to just kill time but works of art that move you through agency, story, and deep philosophical questions. But what are your thoughts? Have you played Ghost? Are you excited about the sequel in the works? Are you waiting for it to release on PC? What are some other similar games that have moved you so profoundly? And what are some other games you'd like to see me cover here on Late to the Game? Thanks for watching, and as always, happy gaming.